I'm the builder uh, that tore down the original mule barn and palletized it and shipped it up to the Pendleton area and reconstructed it on site where it is today. The biggest job that you've had since you've been in business on your own would be what? Well, uh, as far as the job that has taken the longest from start to finish, you're, you're looking at it. Tell me how you got involved with the mule barn down at Star to start with. We were doing some work for some very good customers of mine, Ned and Willie McGill. And uh, she said, you know, I've got a, a family member who has this barn and they're thinking that uh, they want it taken down, probably. Um, just want to go ahead and get rid of it. Would you be interested in taking a look at it? And I said, well, sure. I'm, I'm always interested in old buildings like that, barns and, and agricultural buildings. So to make a long story short, uh, I went over and looked at it. And from the first time I walked in it, I was just amazed of the, with the structure of it. And it was been there for years and people forgot all about it. But give me the history of that mule barn. Well, you know, not being from that community, I'm sure there's a lot of people who, who could do that a lot more in detail than I can. But the bits and pieces that I've gathered, it was built there uh, somewhere around 100 years ago. It was kind of a central part of that community as, you know, a lot of mules were brought in there. They were uh, broken and trained there. And then a lot of people went there to buy, you know, mules. Uh, is it true that the mules would have come to Anderson on a train? As I understand it, yes, sir. And then how would they get from Anderson down to Star? Would they just drive them? They would drive them just cowboy way. Yeah. And uh, basically drive them all the way there and, and stall them in the barn. And, you know, I never really heard a, a, a solid number on how many mules this barn could hold, but I know it was a lot. A lot. I've even had people tell me, say, you know, we live 20, 30 miles away. And I remember when I was young, getting in a wagon and we would ride over to Star and sleep in the wagon and uh, Daddy would buy mules there and then we'd bring them home. And so I've heard some really interesting stories uh, of, of that sort of thing ever since we started this project. When you went through and saw the material that you had to dismantle, keeping in mind we want to build it back kind of like we took it down at this new location. Right. What was your impression of the material that was left down there and what you had to work with? Oh, wow. I was, I was just impressed with it. it. It amazed me that given the age of the barn, um, how the barn had been used because it was well used and how it had sat with a roof that was partially blown off for uh, the last several years. It amazed me uh, how good the timbers, the, the condition of the timbers was. I was also intrigued by, you know, you, you look at them, you could tell they were rough sewn, um, but they were oak and there was poplar and there was all different species of woods kind of mixed together, but it was, uh, it was very impressive when I first saw it. And those beams, the, the longest dimensions of the beams would have been what? Truthfully, the longest Timbers in the building were the poles. They were uh, somewhere around 23 feet tall because they sat on top of the concrete pillars. Now this was a hundred years ago and we're talking that high off the ground with these beams that would have weighed how much would one of those 20 foot? It, it's several hundred pounds, right. probably four or 500 pounds. So how would they have constructed this thing? You know, that's one of the things I thought about a lot as we were going through this project. It, it kind of made me think about how the people during that time, how much manual labor went into it um, and how much more difficult it was for them to build it than it was for me to take it apart and rebuild it. Um, of course, I had the benefit of modern machinery to help me, but I would kind of speculate, you know, that, that then once they saw the timbers out, on the on the sawmill um someone had told me there was a sawmill set up on site so they they drug the the logs up to the mill they milled them there and then used them uh, as they needed them but i would think you know a lot of block and tackle work um, um certainly a lot of hand-built scaffolding went into uh, being able to access uh the the parts of the 
the framing that they needed to get to and just a lot of back breaking hard work. Well, they had no skill saw. They had no chainsaw. Right. So that means they were the, the two men saws and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Hand saws. Uh, I would assume most of these beams were, were cut to length with hand saws. We even saw, uh, or on several of the beams, there's places where they, they had been hewn to fit into the spot where they, they were needed. Every time you had to cut one, it was, it was labor. It was work. Tell me about taking it down, how long it took, how many guys, and what you had a plan to take it down because the idea is to save as much of the salvageable material that you can. Right. Yes, sir. That was, uh, it, it was a good bit of planning in, in the process of taking it down. Um, if we first had to number and catalog everything, uh, it took thousands of pictures, videos that just so we would have reference when we were building it back. But, uh, as far as taking it down, crew of, uh, five men on average, we keep about five guys there. And uh, it was just one piece at a time. It's kind of the way you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. And you, and you started at the top and took the tin roof off. We did. We started at the top. Uh, we took the, the metal roof off, and then we just kind of went from the top down. And uh, once we got the center aisle torn down so far, we were able to start taking the, the lean-to roofs off of it. And we finished up uh, in the... The individual rooms, they were framed just with regular stud wall frame, and then we ended up taking those out last. But um, I think I had, from the very first nail that we pulled, uh, about right at 60 days total and taking it down. We had to pull all the nails, palletize it, and get it ready to ship. All right, so you, you move all the stuff from Star to Pendleton, and it's stacked up here on the on the road in front of Tri County Tech, mm -hmm. next to the Anderson County Agricultural Museum. Yes. Sir. So you get all the stuff here. Now, what do you do? Yeah, that's when the real work starts. Uh, after the foundation, you know, we just started figuring out where do we, you know, we started on the front. We built those two rooms, and then we start laying the heavy timbers against those rooms, they're able to structurally hold it up. And so we just start adding um, one after another and building it back the way it was. It's 120 feet now where it was 200 feet long originally. We had to salvage a good bit of wood out of the back half to be able to replace parts that were rotten on the half that we've reconstructed. And the, in this new building, we have cement pillars that the beams are resting on. Yes. And that's just like it was down at the old place? That's right. Yeah, the foundation was pretty impressive. I think that's the, uh, you could attribute a lot of its longevity to the fact that it had a good foundation where it was. Um, and the center part of the barn, kind of the focal part of the barn, um, all that was on a solid uh, foundation. Tell me about the door with the with the name on it as you come in. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Uh, we we walk in and, you, and there on the area, uh, the first room on the right when you walk in the the main door is Elias McGee. His name just written right there on the door. And uh, when you go in, it uh, it appeared to be a room where um, there used to be a lot of harness, right. a lot of tack. And uh, they had repurposed it at some point during the history of the barn. There was a chute. They it kind of knocked out a hole in the foundation where the cows could run in there, and they just run them up the ramp and right onto the truck. So it was pretty neat. Pretty amazing. All right, tell me how this facility, the mule barn, is now going to be used. You know, that's a that's a good question. I think uh, the the agricultural museum has a, a lot of plans. Um, for it, but I think one of the main uh, uses of this building will be in an in a educational uh, way because there's just so much that you can talk about when you come into a barn like this. And uh, I hope that certainly future generations can see it and can learn from it and can reflect, you know, about where we came from. 
not just uh, agriculturally, but as a, a culture in general. You know, this this is representative of a time where men worked daylight to dark, yeah. and it was uh, it was easy. There was no mechanization, you know, and so they had a huge investment of their time and of their lives into a, a building like this. And I hope that uh, whatever their plans for the future are, um, that that people will will admire it and will learn from it. You've got to have a certain amount of pride having your name attached to this, that you and your guys are the ones that created this and what you had to work with. Absolutely. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a, that's a good assessment of it. I am. I'm, I'm very proud. I'm thankful to have had the opportunity to be a part of it, um, first of all. And uh, the Lord has blessed us, allowed us to uh, do this entire project safely. We had very little problems along the way. It took a, a while, almost two years yeah. from start to finish. We didn't work on it every day. We had other projects scattered in throughout. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I have a lot of pride in, in knowing that uh, me and my men, the men that worked for me, they were great. Hey. Um, you know, it took a lot of dedication, a lot of – I'm sure there were days they just wanted to walk off. Uh, but they hung in there with me. And uh, obviously without them, there's no way. Yeah. Uh, we could have did it uh, the the whole project, but no, it was it it was really a good experience and and something I'm I'm grateful I had opportunity to do and uh, thankful that I took that opportunity.